Each year, millions of people try to realize their true potential by setting New Year's resolutions. Rene Descartes once said, it is not enough to have a good mind. The main thing is to use it well. People who set resolutions realize that they are better than they are allowing themselves to be. They have become unsatisfied with some aspect of their life and have decided that they would settle no longer. With this in mind, they become extremely motivated to change. But why then do 80% of people fail their New Year's resolutions in spite of this motivation? They fail because it is not enough to have New Year's resolutions. The main thing is to do them well. I hope you have had a great 2018. My name is Nick and this is Mindful Mastery. If you haven't already, consider subscribing for more content to help you master your mind. Today, I'm going to be going over five steps to make sure you do your resolutions well. Now, what exactly is a resolution? Well, if you tell Google to define resolution, then you'll see that a resolution is a firm decision to do or not to do something. Now, I find this definition a little bit ironic because if 20% of people succeeding in their resolution is a firm decision, then I'm not so sure how firm a firm decision is. A better term would probably be New Year's hopes, because with hopes, you don't really need to do anything. Pretty much the only thing you need to do is sit there and cross your fingers. And honestly, if you do that, then you might even get 20% of what you hope for. But I digress. Some people tend to be a little overly ambitious with their New Year's resolutions. They set out to wake up early, start reading, exercising, learning a new language, and eating healthy. Now, whenever they're trying to work on all of these, they aren't investing enough time to any single one. And as a result, they give up on all of them. Now, I'm not gonna say that you should not make a lot of New Year's resolutions because there are a lot of areas in our life that we can improve in and it's good to have goals in each of them to make sure that we continue improving. So instead, step number one is to write and prioritize your resolutions. So you need to get a piece of paper and take all the time that you need, just write down as many resolutions as you can think of, and then get another piece of paper and figure out which one resolution is the most important to you and write that at the top of that piece of paper and then continue to do that until you're out of resolutions on the first paper. You probably see where this is going. So instead of doing all of the resolutions at once, you're just gonna focus on that first resolution and you're not gonna move to the second until you are confident that that first resolution is a part of who you are. And when picking your most important resolutions, you should try and look for keystone habits, which is a term from the book, The Power of Habit by Charles Duhigg. Keystone habits are habits that start a chain reaction and make it easier to start other habits. If you start waking up early in the morning, then you'll have more time to exercise, read, learn a language, and cook yourself a healthy meal. My keystone habit is pressing the snooze button because whenever I press it, it feels like I've lost the day, which makes me lose motivation to do pretty much everything else. I haven't ran the exact numbers, but I'd be willing to bet that on the days that I press the snooze button, I am productive about 20% of the time, and on days that I don't, I'm productive about 80% of the time. Whenever people set their initial resolutions, they are extremely motivated and excited about that resolution. But what normally ends up happening, slowly but surely, that motivation fades away. The next step is to... Hold on one second. You actually want to go and do these first three steps. So go ahead, pause the video, go and get your piece of paper, prioritize your resolutions, I'm waiting. Oh, he's waking up, gotta go. So as I was saying, the next step is to find your why. To quote Tony Robbins, who paraphrased Friedrich Nietzsche, he who has a why to live for 
can bear almost any how. Those that lose motivation tend to lose it because they don't have a strong enough why. Now, don't get me wrong, you'll still have days where you have less motivation than others, but on average, as long as you have a strong enough why, you will continue to be motivated. That why should convince you not only should you change, but that you must change. So get out a piece of paper and make two columns. On one column, put the costs of not changing, in the other, put the benefits that will come if you do change. And write as many as you can possibly think of, because the more that you write, the stronger it will make your why. The goal of this is to make not changing seem as painful as possible, and changing seem as pleasurable as possible. So list as many as you can think of, be as extreme as you want to, and visualize the outcome and what it will feel like. The more vivid the visualization, the stronger your why will become. Another thing real quick, you don't have to actually go through and do all of your resolutions. You can just do the first one right now and then save the others for later, but make sure you do the first one right now. I'll see you later, you stallion. One source of pain you can create as a barrier to help you stick to your resolutions is feeling disappointed in yourself. The problem that most people have is that they don't identify with the resolution. So whenever they don't follow it, they aren't really surprised because they weren't going against their expectations. But whenever you identify with the resolution and you don't act in accordance with it, then you'll be extremely disappointed in yourself. If you consider yourself a nice guy and then one day you're upset about something and then end up cursing someone out for accidentally bumping into you, then you'll be extremely disappointed in yourself because you were acting against your expectations. So in order to change your identity, you need to change how you regard your resolution. I mean, think about how most people regard their resolutions. If someone offers them fast food, then they say, no thanks, I'm trying to eat healthy, but what they should say is, no thanks, I eat healthy. Now, granted, that one sounds like a little snobby, so let me give you a better example. If someone offers you a cigarette, then you might say, no, I'm trying to quit. But what you should say is, I'm not a smoker. And this might seem like small changes, and they are small changes. But the more you tell yourself that you're not a smoker, the more you'll begin to believe it. The next problem people tend to have is that they set out to make these large changes, but don't give themselves a plan to achieve those changes. They try to climb a mountain without any gear or knowing a path to follow. Step number three is to make it smart, G, which stands for specific, measurable, actionable, time-bound, and gradual. Now, you'll normally hear this as smart, and the R is normally realistic, but as long as you make it gradual, then you can make it as insane as you want to. But to start off with specific, instead of saying, I want to learn a language, say, I want to learn Arabic to the intermediate level. Then to make it measurable, you have to give yourself some reference for when you know you have achieved that result. Now, obviously you want to reach the intermediate level, but you also want to find a test that will tell you when you have reached that level. Then to make it actionable, you'll add that you'll study an hour each and every day. Then to make it time bound, you'll take the test in June or July, but pick one of the two. Now with gradual, you have to be a little bit more meticulous because it can be difficult to go from studying no Arabic to studying an hour each and every day. So at first you should start off with 10 hours a day for the first week, then 20 hours, then 30 hours and so on until you get to the hour. But Arabic is a pretty complicated language and there is a lot that goes into reaching the intermediate level. So you want to start off by researching what the intermediate level looks like. And once you figure out what you need to learn, then you need to organize when you're going to learn what. So probably starting off with learning the alphabet, then pronunciation, then conjugation, and vocabulary, and so on. The goal of this is to give yourself milestones to reach because it makes the giant task of learning Arabic seem much more manageable, which can also help you maintain motivation and make your learning much more effective because you aren't bumbling through the language. You also have to remember that at first, and 
anything, your progress is going to be slow, if it's even noticeable at all. But something that James Clear talks about in his book, Atomic Habits, is imagine that you are in a room with an ice cube and the temperature is set to 25 degrees. Now, you can turn it up one degree and nothing will happen. You can turn it up six more degrees and still nothing will happen. But once you reach 33 degrees, slowly but surely, that ice cube will start to melt. Now, your habits will start to melt before 33 degrees, but it can be difficult to notice the progress up until that point. So step number four is to reflect daily on your progress or on ways that you can improve. By reflecting on things that you did well that day or things that you struggled with, you give yourself the ability to look back on where you've came, giving you a better understanding of your progress. Then reflecting on ways that you can improve is a meta habit because you are improving your ability to improve, making it much easier for you to reach your goals, which is something that I would recommend for anyone to do in any area of life because it can help you with resolutions, habits, or everyday life. It might feel like you're taking time away from that which you are trying to improve, but by improving your ability to learn by 1% each day, you'll be able to learn more during each consecutive study session. But whether you are reflecting on ways to improve or on your progress, by doing it daily, you're making sure that your resolution is always on your mind, making it natural for you to think of ways to improve the practice and helping you maintain motivation. But alas, there will come a day, probably many days, where you don't go to the gym or you don't practice the language. What a horrible, uncommitted person you are, huh? I mean, what even made you think you could do this resolution? Obviously, I'm kidding. The fifth and final step is to accept your mistakes because you will make them and they will be plenty. But just because you make a mistake doesn't mean you have failed your resolution. A resolution is something that you do over the long run. So just because you miss one or two days doesn't mean you fail. You only fail when those one or two days turn into 10 or 20 days. And even then, it's not too late. But this is kind of why I don't like habit trackers that tell you how many days you have done the habit. While it can be very motivational to keep that number up and make sure that it doesn't go down to zero, if in case you do have a bad day and it does go down to zero, it can be extremely disheartening because you became more focused on the number instead of the habit. So you can try habit tracking apps like Habitica or Momentum, but just make sure that you don't get too obsessed with the number because the habit is what really matters. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please give it a like. Have a great day and an even better 2019.